So, in this chapter, we will learn how to build a static application. So, first of all, let's have a look to the Android applicative stack. First of all, we can observe that at the bottom part, we have the Linux kernel. The Linux kernel will provide you all the drivers uh, for music, Bluetooth, and so on. On the top of this block, uh, we can observe two uh, blocks. The first one is the uh, Android framework and the art uh, runtime, which I mentioned in a previous video. And this core library, which is the, ba the basis for developing Android application. We can also see that on the top of the Linux kernel, uh, there is a block uh, for managing audio, camera, and so on. Now that we have these two blocks, we can build on the top of these two blocks a new block, which is a native library. This native library will provide you manager for audio, for libc, and so on. And so you have here an operating system which is ready for development. So on the top of this, you can use the framework, Android framework, which will provide you all you need to develop your own application. For instance, activities, content provider, intent filter, and so on. And finally, you can develop your own application on the top of this. So you have to remember that you have this stack every time you want to develop something. So you are on the top of the stack, and you have to go through this stack to, to run your code. So as, as I mentioned earlier, there is one sandbox per application. So it means that one application is one Linux user. So we have some security here. And one application is also one process, which means that you can, also, you can have only one process per application. You can have multiple threads, but you cannot have more than one process. Finally, one application is one virtual machine. If you use art, we can discuss, uh, we can discuss of that. But basically, one virtual machine per application. So all of this can lead to slower application. We will see that later. What about permission? Permission are all declared in Android manifest.xml. So this is why I told you that this is the most important file in your application. When you build an application, you have to declare its permission. And the user may be required to enable or not some of this permission. Finally, if you want to communicate between applications, you can use the UID of application to share information between applications. So now I will talk of activities. From now, I talk of application. And I will be more precise uh, now. An application is composed of multiple activities. So for each application, we have many activities. For instance, if we take, if we take um, an email reader application, we can have multiple screens. You can consider that each screen is an activity. OK? So we will have one activity for displaying email, one activity for reading email, one activity for writing email, and so on, and so on, and so on. Each activity must be declared in the Android uh, manifest.xml. If not, you will have some troubles. So consider that an activity is a user interface, and an activity must inherit from the activity class. So now that we have many activities that has to be declared in uh, the Android file, the Android manifest.xml, we can ask how we can launch an activity from another. We will see that later. OK, so how does activity work? Activity work in the model view uh, controller scheme. So the, the user interface is defined through XML files in res layout uh, directory. 
or res menu if you want to develop your own menu for your application. The controller is the activity class. Okay? So this is where you will load your GUI, this is where you register for event, and this is where you update the view. And the model is defined through a database if you want to, or through a set of Java class. So, let's start to build a simple user interface. My first in the world, so I use the editor which is provided inside of Android Studio. And I will define my GUI through a file called activitymain.xml. So here we can see that I have a layout. And inside of this layout, I have a text view, which is what will display um, my first hello world here. OK? So here, we have a few lines to define our GUI. Now, OK, we can observe that this user interface have a specific form, which means that it has to be in a layout. So a layout is defined in three ways. We can have a linear layout, where elements will be positioned next to next in horizontally or vertically. We can have a relative layout, where you position the element according to your wishes. Or you can have a web view, where you can just take a web page and display it inside of Android. So on the top of your user interface, you have to have a layout. And this layout can this layout construct a, a hierarchy. And this hierarchy is composed of leaves. And these leaves are components, for instance, a text view. Um, the nodes, the internal nodes of uh, this hierarchy are layouts. OK, so you can nest the different layout inside of your architecture. So now that we have built this, uh, this, um, this user interface, we want to load it. So when you, your application will be launched, the onCreate uh, method will be called. And this onCreate method will set content view. Here, I will describe it later. Layout, which is the directory where I fix the layout, and activity main was the previous uh, XML I showed you. So these three lines of code instantiate your uh, GUI. So here we can observe that R is something mysterious. The mysterious R is for resources. It means that we have to make a link between some XML and some ID. And the goal of the resource classes is to make this link. So you can target it directly inside of your Java code. And you can refer it in the other way. So this file will be generated by the toolchain and will provide you some IDs uh, to, to be able to target some elements. So now you can say, hey, can I have access to my view once she is instantiated? And you can do it only by find by view, find view by ID, r dot id dot something. So this, this is the way you can access two elements since they are described in XML, then instantiated. OK? So with a small scheme, here you have your layout. There is an automatic generation for which is a R class. And from your sources, you can have access to the instantiated views through the R class. So finally, if you want to develop an application which behaves differently in landscape or in portrait, you can define two XMLs. 
and the application will load automatically the good one according to um, your device orientation. This is only for static application. I will describe it for dynamic application later. So to sum up, uh, we have an overview of an Android application. Uh, we learn how to uh, manage uh, applicative stack, and we learn that applications are sandboxes. And we learn to define a user interface uh, through a view hierarchy, and we define we can we are able to define landscape or portrait. Uh, um, in user interface and finally the most important is to know how the resource classes uh, work.